A new toxic carcinogenic chemical is discovered on the Madison Kip site, putting the company and the DNR at odds once again. Now, polychlorinated by phenols, PCBs have turned up in the soil there. Good evening, I'm Eric Franke. And I'm Sarah Carlson. Thanks for joining us. The chemical was banned in Congress in 1979, and it was used in a variety of industrial processes, but most often as a coolant. New tonight at 10, the night team's David Douglas explains how it was found and what's expected now. Sarah, the detected PCB levels are more than double the allowable standard. The DNR is demanding immediate action, including significant additional testing and cleanup. KIPP says they'll do all that and more, but the wording of the agency's letter suggests they've lost confidence in the East Side Company. As a refreshing rain falls around Madison KIPP Corporation, neighbors worry what it might be washing off the site. I live just about a block from here and a half a block from the KIPP plant. Today, Lance Green and others in the Schenck Atwood neighborhood learned a second cancerous chemical had been discovered on the property. So this is a very disconcerting uh, a uh, new move that's happened for us and uh, we are we are very concerned about about our health. Recently a soil vapor extraction system was installed on the KIPP property to mitigate earlier concerns about tetrachloroethylene. After it was put in the ground there was dirt left over and before it could be hauled away it had to be tested and that's when the PCB contamination was discovered. We think that Madison KIPP should be responsible to clean up their mess. We want them to be good neighbors and uh, be responsible for what's happened. The DNR does too, and in a letter to the company set clear expectations after it says it hadn't heard from its representatives since the contamination test confirmed PCBs in late March, saying, quote, there is heightened neighborhood concern about your site, and this contamination was found near the property line. We hope your lack of response is not an indication of a lack of urgency. They should have just gotten right on top of it way back in 1994. PCBs are most dangerous if they end up in the food chain or water supply, then the chemicals get ingested. Companies can be held responsible for PCB cleanup both on and off their properties. The next phase of testing must be complete by May 1st. A rep for KIPP would not say much other than they were surprised by the DNR's letter saying they had been communicating. So, David, coincidentally, too, there's news on the neighbor's lawsuit today as well, right? Yes, the lawsuit today was granted class action status in federal court. What started as a lawsuit with 11 plaintiffs now includes 80 living in 34 homes off Marquette Street and in that surrounding neighborhood. All right, thank you so much, David Douglas reporting. And the KIPP plant has been in the headlines, as you probably know, for years. Back in the 80s, the company vented tetrachloroethylene outside, not knowing that it could be carcinogenic. Concerns began in 1994 when KIPP accelerated production, prompting neighbors to complain to the city about respiratory irritation, headaches, and nausea. In 2004, residents won a lawsuit requiring air quality changes, but the DNR did not enforce them until EPA air quality standards changed in 2007. Over the last couple of years, vapor extraction units have been installed in some homes along Marquette Street over concerns that soil vapor could be leaching up through basement slabs. And then in October of last year, 11 people filed the lawsuit that today the judge determined does meet class action status.